Hey, what's up and welcome to your online lecture series uh, with me, Sir Vincent, your instructor. So, I'm a licensed criminologist and the course that we're gonna talk about is all about Technical English 1, Investigative Report Writing with Presentation. Okay, this one is the new curriculum, okay? So, may new curriculum na siya uh, pasok uh, under Criminology, okay? So, yan, dito tayo. So, this is the writing the report, pero then again, before you begin with this topic sa nakikita ninyo or subtopics, itong sentence, opening sentences, expanding sentences, and combining sentences, I highly suggest you to uh, refrain muna from watching this and try to review. Review your basic English grammar. O yung 8 parts of speech. Kung ba paano gumagana yung mga yun. Okay? Kailangan nyo siya ma-review before you, you proceed with this one writing the report. Okay? So, this is writing the report. Bibigyan ko kayo ng tips on how to write, lalo na sa ating mga police reports. So, meron tayo dito ang apat na subtopics na pag-uusapan. It's uh, the sentence construction. Yung muna natin ang pag-uusapan para uh, mas madali or mas step-by-step step tayo. Then, next, itong mga itong nakikita ninyo. Itong mga kasunod. Okay? So, tara. Pag-uusapan natin ng sentence construction. Okay. So, writing the report, sentence construction. Ito ay yung ating... Uh, sentences na it usually begins diba, with a uh, normal na nakikita natin na mga uh, writing. Diba? Meron tayong pinag-uusapan at meron ginagawa yung ating subject. So, this is the typical subject and predicate form. And, syempre, yung subject, this is the one that is being talked about. And yung predicate, kung ano yung ginagawa ni subject. So, itong example na nakikita nyo dito sa baba, it's a, it's, it is an example of an natural order. Okay? Kasi may different orders pa tayo wherein na pag-uusapan din natin mamaya. Okay? Kailangan lang natin ulit maalala na ang ating sentence ay merong subject at may predicate. Okay? That's the basic sentence construction. And yun lang naman ang ating kailangan malaman when it comes to sentence construction. Okay? Yan. Okay? At isa lang na natin ulit yung pinaka-background. Diba? Napakabilis. Napakabilis yung sentence construction. Kailangan may subject and predicate. So, our subtopic number two would be, ito na medyo uh, bibigyan na natin ng DA. Bibigyan na natin ng mga attention. Okay, diba? Sana all binibigyan ng attention, no? So, ito. Kung nakikinig ka, this is on how to open sentences. Okay, eh, paano simulan? Diba? Mga opening. Okay, typically, marami naman kayo may kita through reading. Sabi ko sa inyo, magkakambal naman ng reading and writing all throughout. You could read lots of cases. You could read uh, mga police reports and all in order for you to have an idea on how to write, di ba? Pwede naman kayo mag-write on your own way, di ba? Kasi is, art is a progressive type. It's not one sitting. But this is our my suggested techniques on how to open your sentences. Okay? You, lalo na sa police report. Okay? Sa technical English natin. So, you could really start with using an adverb. Okay? Alam naman na natin ang, ang adverb. Okay? Ang adverb kasi natin, uh, papadaliin na lang natin normally kasi si adverb, yung mga salita na may ly, it modifies verb, adjectives, and other adverb. Okay? Siya yung parang pinaka-adjective ni verb. Ganun ko siya tinitinan in order for me to understand it. But then again, I really highly suggest you to, to review yung 8 parts of speech. Okay? So, ganyan niya. Binibigyan niya siya ng higher form of emotion. O itong mga adverbs natin. Nilalagyan niya ng mga uh, uh, inapasok dun sa nagbabasa para at least maramdaman natin kung ano yung nangyayari. Okay? Ganun ang tinitingnan ko on, on how adverbs are. Okay? So, pwede mo siyang ganyan gawin. I-opening mo siya katulad na ito. Diba? Quickly, the victim attempted to flee but was held back by the suspect. Okay? Kita nyo naman on how to open. Ito yung mga opening na sinasabi natin. Kasi ikaw, uh, uh, at your perspective, your reader, may kita mo in a higher emotion. Diba? In a higher uh, position. Kung ano nangyayari. Okay? Pwede mo siyang lagyan ng ganyan. But then again, when you're opening, ito yung pinakakilang naman dyan eh. When you're opening a sentence, if you want to put a higher emotion doon sa sinusulat mo, ang pinaka-rule, and ikaw as a writer, alam mo dapat na ang kasunod dapat yan is a subject. Okay? Kung may kita nyo naman dito, after natin mag-open, it's the subject na pinag-uusapan na natin. Okay? May maraming mga police reports na ganito mag-open, na ganito rin ang practice na ginagawa. Okay? First technique is start 
with an adverb. Okay? Depende pa rin yun sa love song kung ano yung uh, sinusulat ninyo. Baka kasi pilitin ninyo diba, na magsimula sa adverb. Again, depende pa rin siya dun sa love song. Depende pa rin siya doon sa uh, uh, kaso na hawak ninyo. Okay? Next na tip na pwede natin pasukin is simula mo siya with the prepositional uh, prepositional phrase. Okay? Preposition, diba, katulad na naaalala natin, Uh, it shows relationship of a noun dun sa other parts ng sentence. Okay? Pwede siya dito magsabi natin, it could state position kung anong nangyari, ano yung relationship niya doon sa noun and the other parts of the sentence. Okay? Yung predicates natin, okay, kung ano yung mga ideas, pinalagyan niya ng uh, relationship yung mga nandun sa loob ng sentences natin. Okay? Pwede natin siya kasi simulan uh, with a prepositional uh, phrase. Okay? Paano ba yon? Paano ba natin siya uh, ilalagay? Okay? Ang prepositional phrase, kung ako ang pagagamitin ninyo, I would use it to uh, to show kung ano yung nangyayari. Okay? Kung ano yung, yung position, ano yung relationship nitong first statement na unang ilalagay nyo yung opening dun sa subject. Okay? So, ang pinaka-basic formula na may kita natin, it's the preposition. Hanap kang preposition plus the object. Okay? Then, after nun, katulad na ito na nakikita ninyo, okay? Diba? This is the preposition, okay? And ito, ito yung object, okay? This is a pronoun, eh. Yung her, okay? Ito yung object. In her sworn statement, ito na yung pinaka-subject. Witness, Shielo Pormento admitted that the subject is her former boyfriend. Okay? Binibigyan na natin ng magandang opening. Diba? Mas nabibigyan kasi natin ito rin. Isa rin ito sa tip on how to put to put accuracy on your writing. Okay? Tulad niyan, use a prepositional phrase in opening sentences. Okay? Next. Yan. Techniques in opening sentences start with a participial phrase. So, ang ating participial phrase, alam ko, kayo ay inaantok at napag-iisip-isip na kung ano nangyayari. Kung kayo dito, I really want you to again, okay, to review. Napakarami naman open sources to review your eight parts of speech and English grammar. Yun lang. Kailangan lang natin ma-build at ma-review ulit yun in order for you to understand, di ba? Para mas maano mo yung ma- ma-bear mo yung fruit nitong lecture na ito. Kaya huwag pilitin kasi uh, hindi ko na dapat inuulit yung eight parts of speech. Di ba? It is expected for you to know. So, ito na nga ang ulit ang sign for you to understand. Kung by this time, medyo nahihirapan ka pa rin sumabay. Okay, review, review, review your eight parts of speech and basic English grammar. So again, let's go back to the main topic. Simulan mo sa isang participial phrase. Okay, pwede ka mag-present participial phrase, participle phrase, past participial phrase, perfect participial phrase. Okay, simulan natin sa uh, present participle phrase, participial phrase. Okay, pwede participial phrase. Okay, ang pinaka uh, inaalala ko lang naman when, when it comes to present participle phrase, uh, uh, there is a verb plus an ing. Okay, it would serve as an adjective. Okay, verb plus with an ing plus an adverb. Okay, kung may kita nyo dito sa uh, ating example, yan, di ba? Driving and recklessly. Okay, yan. So, may adverb tayo. Meron din tayong... Uh, participial na a uh, past participle rather a present participle rather na verb plus ing which is driving okay so driving recklessly but the murder suspect side sweep the uh, a pedestrian rather who was about to cross the street okay so yung pinaka basic natin na alalahanin uh, a verb with ing plus an adverb okay kinagamit natin siya it would serve as an adjective doon sa subject na pag-uusapan natin. Kasunod na yan. Okay? Ito yung uh, piece mong subject natin. Yung ating uh, the murder suspect. Okay? Yan ang pinag-uusapan. Kasi natin. Next, on how to use participial phrase. Yan. Past participial phrase. Ang kailangan mo lang naman ditong maalala. Diba? You could read it. You could pause it. Basahin mo muna kung ano nakalagay dyan. But I make this very easy. Okay? Ang ating uh, past participial phrase, ito yung mga verbs with an ending of ed, t, or en. Okay, alam naman natin yon Yung ating past tense, okay? Then, you could use an adverb, then yung object. 
Okay? Pwede rin yung object na pinag-uusapan natin. E, ganun din siya, katulad ng ating present participle, it will be uh, used as an adjective. Okay? So, ang pinaka pwede nyo nalang alalahanin, uh, in a nutshell, it is a verb with ed. Okay? Plus an adverb, pwede din. Then, ayun na, yung mismong subject na pinag-uusapan natin. Okay? Katulad yan, horrified. So, gumamit lang siya dito ng uh, past participle. Diba? Horrified. Ito naman, ang nilagyan niya dito is with an adverb. Okay? Yung by is an adverb. Then, ito yung object, the news. Okay? This is the past participle, horrified. By is an adverb. The news is the uh, object na pinag-usapan natin. This is the subject. Itong the family of the massacre victims would only cry in an anguish when the suspect was released on bail. Okay? Katulad ng sinasabi ko sa inyo, these are tips. Baka kasi pilitin ninyo, ha? Depende pa rin yan. Okay? Pwede, you could do a draft, then pwede nyo siyang gamitin itong mga techniques na to. Pero then again, wag pilitin. Lalo na pagka, di talaga naman talaga siya swap. Okay? These are tips only. Next. Okay? Subordinate or dependent clauses. Okay? Ang ating subordinate and dependent clauses, ang kailangan nyo lang siyang alalahanin, Uh, it contains the subject and the verb. Pero hindi siya kaya mag-stand alone as a complete idea kung wala yung main clause o yung kasunod na yun. Okay? Paano ba natin siya mas madadaling ma maintindihan? Okay, sige. Uh, the greatest thing na pwede mo siyang isipin nun writing, itong subordinate or dependent cause, ito ay nagsistart with a causality. Diba? Ano yung dahilan? A causality. Then, pwede rin siya mag-start mag, mag with the conjunctions. Okay? Mga because. Okay? Mga ganyan. Mga ganyang terms. Tulad na to, because he was their father. Father's favorite son. Yan, mga ganyan. Kasi, itong thought na to, it is an incomplete without the main clauses na Mar Revilla was resented by his siblings. Okay? Ito kasi, it's a complete thought already. Itong main clause natin. Ito, pag kanilagay mo lang to, on, on the first part, Diba? Hindi siya pa pwede. Uh, the, the idea is incomplete. Okay? Ayan yung mga dependent clauses natin. Okay? It has its own uh, subject and the verb. Okay? And kadalasan, kung titinan yung other examples dito, uh, nagsistart siya ng mga causality or causes. Ano ba yung uh, basic concept natin ng cause and effect? Diba? Kung ano yung, nangya, kung ano yung, yung main cause, ano ba natin siya? Paano ba natin siya mas mapapadali? Uh, we could think it as ito yung nangyari yan ito na lang ito yung nangyari the effect okay, this is our causes okay when he was interrogated okay, ibig sabihin na ito yung mga nangyari prior na ito yung mangyari okay mahirap kasi siya maintindihan if you if you wouldn't review again pagka medyo nalilito and all review 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 your uh, eight parts of speech okay Then, yung basic logic ng causality, cause and effect. Okay? Yan. Those are the dependent clause. Okay? Next would be... Start with infinitive. Mga infinitives natin. You could pause here. Pwede mo siyang uh, basahin. But then again, I'll explain this in the easiest way possible. Okay? Ang ating infinitive phrases or infinitives kasi, napakadali lang niyang intindihin because... Ang, ang pinaka kailangan mo lang lalahanin is 2 plus yung verb. Yun lang. 2 plus yung verb. Okay? Uh, this expresses kung ano yung nangyari. Okay? Diba? It expresses the activity yung mismong subject na pinag-uusapan natin. For example, ito nakikita natin. 2 diba? plus yung ating uh, verb. 2 plus yung ating verb. Ito yung object. Pwede rin naman. Naglagay ng object. Okay? 2 plus yung verb, then yung subject. Doon nila ginagawa yan. Okay, to divert the attention of the suspect. Okay, ito na yung ating mismong subject. Si Neil De Silva screamed at the top of her lungs. Okay, these are infinitives. Okay, pinapakita dito yung uh, activity na ginawa ni Neil De Silva. Okay, bakit nga daw ba talaga sumigaw si Neil De Silva? It is to divert the attention of the suspect. Okay? Ito lang yung pinakamadali nyo aalalahanin. Uh, when it comes to opening sentences, ito yung isa sa mga pinaka nagagawa natin. 
uh, normally if you if you're a fanatic on reading, ito lang yun eh. Yung lahat ng techniques na yun eh. It is for you to yeah, use the inverted order. Okay, kasi kanina it's the natural order, yung subject and then yung predicate. Sa inverted order natin is baliktad, syempre inverted nga. Ang nauna is yung verb or yung predicates natin kadalasan. And ang pinaka nasa dulo ay yung ating mga subject. Kasi sa inverted order kasi uh, one thing that I really like is that it shows an active voice. Kay active voice kung makikita mo siya dito sa inverted order. So it begins with the predicate in the sentence. It to be followed by the subject na pinag-uusapan natin. Okay? Katulad dito sa example, simulan muna natin sa natural order. Ganito kasi siya kung titignan mo eh. Five uh, bullet yan, bullet shells of .45 caliber pistol believed to have been used by the unidentified gunman were recovered from the crime scene. ba? Diba? Para medyo dull. And ewan, eh, kung gusto mo ang reader mo mag-immerse dun sa binabasa mo, it is really nice for you to write in an inverted order. Okay, simulan mo siya sa may action word. Recovered from the crime scene were five bullet shells of .45 caliber pistol believed to have been used by the unidentified gunman. Okay? So, yan. That's the inverted order. So, yeah. Yun na naman yun. So, yun lang na pag-usapan natin muna. Uh, I'll, I'll cut this. This will be your part one. So, I really do hope that you have learned something. Again and again, I want you to review the basics, the fundamentals. Okay? Ang itong mga tuturo ko dito on, on how to write police reports, itong mga techniques and tips, it would really depend pa rin doon sa kaso na hawak ninyo. But, again, I really do hope that these techniques would be imparted on your ways of writing. So again, thank you very much for your time. I'm Sir Vince again, and see you again for the part 2 of this series. Okay, have a good one po sa lahat.